Energize Show. Up the Irish. Okay, what's going on, guys? And welcome to a brand new episode of Energize. Ross, introduce the guest. We have Wexford's answer to Canelo Alvarez. It's the Wexford Warrior. It's Brian the Pikeman Moore. Brian, how are you doing? I'm much better after that introduction. I feel good about myself. What's the story? Yeah, man, you wouldn't get that on Showtime, would you? (laughs) (laughs) Starting with the daggers. Brian, it's great to have you back on, man. How are you keeping? Yeah, man, I'm great. I'm fucking buzzing here. You know, it's uh, it's Tuesday morning, you know, just having breakfast. Weight is good. Head is good. Everything is good, man. I just, I'm like, a, I've said it in the last couple of interviews, I'm like a kid at Christmas here. I keep waking up going, yes, it's fight day. Oh, fuck it, no, it's not. I keep thinking it's fight day, but uh, we're, we'll get there. And, uh, you know, it's, I put so much work into this. I've been so like, I've, I've just been, I've done everything to the letter. And I just can't wait to get on Saturday night and show everybody this, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah Brian, Bellator 263 this Saturday. Make sure not to miss it. You know, Basil, Brian, you, you've invested a lot, uh, not into just this camp, but like even into your house at home, like you, you've uh, built new stuff within your house. What what sort of equipment have you got in there now? Because I think I saw you had a sauna and something else in there now. Yeah, man, I've just fucking, I'm, uh, I don't know what it is, but uh, look at it, I don't, I don't spend money on dumb shit. I do it stuff that, no, as soon as it pops in my head, I just keep thinking of it until it's there, basically. But uh, like I have a home gym, it's fully equipped, like a uh, martial arts area of, you know, treadmill, bike, they're, they're high-end ones, you know what I mean? I've, you know, everything I need for martial arts there. And then, uh, you know, I've, I've put into my house like a new sauna and stuff for recovery. Um, you know, so I've just, I've got a really good training area there. I've got a really good recovery area there. And then just down the road is my actual uh, business gym. So I'm, I'm pretty blessed, really, with everything, to be honest. You know what I mean? But that way. Yeah, More that's, resorts. <laughs> uh, that, that's it. Uh, like, that's one thing I was saying to Baz uh, before you were on air. I was like, I was like, Brian's like one of these people who is literally ready all year round. Like, you, you'll never catch him out of shape. Um, like, you're constantly training. And you, you, I, I always sort of say, I, I think Brian Moore is one of the most underrated fighters to ever come out of Ireland. Uh, and I was saying, you're on a bit of a streak at the moment, Brian. I think your last two performances have been two of your best performances. What sort of export, uh, What sort of performance can we expect this Saturday? Better again. Better again. Like, um, you take away the, the hat fight where I broke my two hands. That was a great performance as well. Yeah. And if I had won that one, which I was on a very clear path to winning, you know, I'd be on like a four or five fight win streak. And I'm, I'm, on, I'm only peaking, you know, and I really, really believe that. And this camp was... At completely different level again, and I'm not just saying that because I'm trying to amp myself up. Burning, I'm saying it because I'm just stating facts here. You know, I have amazing training partners, and I love them to, bit, to bits. But I had to get a fresh man every round because they couldn't keep up with my, with my with my pace, with my energy, and that's the kind of that's what I'm bringing on Saturday night. You know, um, I think I think it's I use the word look. I'm lucky. I'm not really lucky. I work very fucking hard. And I'm not going to say the stars are aligning because again. If they're not. I've put myself into this position where I'm, I'm, I'm firing on all cylinders. I'm ready to go in and put on a hell of a performance. Do you, do you feel right now, uh, Brian? You're at, like at your actual peak because you're. I think if I'm correct, you're 33 now. Like, I mean, every time anyone we look at your stories or anything, you're constantly either, you're you're doing something. You're either training or else you're keeping the kids busy. You're just the model professional, really. I'm sure everyone that's watching now could 100 percent agree. Bar Ross, obviously. But I mean, like, do you <laughs> do you feel like you're in your absolute prime right now? Probably, I don't know, probably not. I don't know. It's, it's only when you get past your prime, you realize when you're at it. And I'm improving on a daily basis. And I think what I do is so different than everybody um, that it's kind of hard to monitor or track. I think I'm an outlier in the sense of that I do 70% of my training by myself. 30% is with people, with coaches, with, with teammates. 70% is done by myself. And since I've adopted that model, I'm, I'm flying it. I'm doing great. And, um, you know, Time will tell, but what I what I will say is I'm 33. I feel a far better athlete, a far healthier human, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, than I was when I was 23, 28, whatever it may be. So right now, every single I'm not saying it to it's not it's not a saying or an expression, but every week I'm a better athlete. Every week I'm a better fighter. And you know, my your, my coaches will tell you that, my teammates will tell you that. Saturday night will tell you that too. Well, do you think with that 70 30 split that number one, you're not as doing as much sparring, as much contact with people, and that's giving you longevity? And number two, you get to listen to your body more and you know when to push and when to pull back. Because when you're training with people and you're in a class and you're doing drills or whatever, you know what I mean? 
you might actually be done 20 minutes before the class is over. And you know what I mean? You good out because you're trying to be tough. If that makes sense. No, I actually, no. Uh, to be honest, I do a lot of different recovery modules, but I also do a lot of tracking of recovery so I can, and I, and I know my body inside out at this stage. So I know when to pull back and know when to push forward. And that's something that I've had to try and really work hard on and pulling back at times. But to be honest, when I go into like a class where it's drilling for striking, I do, my focus goes, my, the energy isn't high enough. When I do things myself or with my phenomenal striking coach, Stephen Murphy, we are 90 miles an hour because that's what the fight is. It's what's 100 miles an hour. And it's about maintaining that focus. If you look at my, my stories, you look at my stuff that I put up, I rarely go at a pace where mistakes can be made. It's at a pace that mimics a fight a lot. And I'm trying to bring that technique to keep it as sharp as possible in that type of intensity and i think that's where it's a little bit different you know what i mean and um you know uh, because I, I have that 70 30 or i think i worked today it was like 65 but anyway just say 70 30 because i'm at yeah, that kind of a ratio yeah, yeah because i'm at that kind of a ratio i uh, i do a lot more hours than than what a class would be or a session mm-hmm. would be some of my training is two and a half hours long per session you know what i mean um I enjoy it. I fucking love it. You say that I train all the time. I do it because I love it. Simple as that. Me hitting the bag is is therapy. Me hitting the bag is is really enjoyable. If the kids are in school or the, the missus has gone away with, with friends, I'm in the I'm in the home gym visualizing fucking knocking out some 135 or in Bellator and enjoying myself. Well, one thing I will say is you're actually fighting um the guy with the best nickname in Bellator, Jordan Ongonowinski. Uh, you can't it not, actually is but, a brilliant uh, nickname. It you can't not <laughs> love that nickname. But uh, what do you know about your opponent, Brian? And what sort of holes do you see in his game? He knows he's going to lose. Key. <laughs> <laughs> Look, at I've, I've the utmost respect for him um, for stepping up on on short notice. But he's one of these guys who who fares well on short notice. He, he he's often winning as the underdog. He's beaten a couple of good UFC vets. So I'm well aware about what he is. I've since last Friday. I got the phone call as I as I got walked in my hotel room. I hadn't even the lights turned on. And I got my all these notifications on my phone. All I could see was Scoggins COVID fight off. I was like, "Fuck me!" Oh. So then we were, then we were, um, then I was asked to fight a guy who was twenty and five. He was ranked number one in in Japan, number two in Russia. And I said, "Yes, let's do it." And he pulled out the next day. He seen must have seen my highlight reel or something and didn't want any of it. And <laughs> then, uh, Definitely. Yeah, that's it. But then this this guy turned uh, show. Uh, has signed the contract, he's passed his medicals, everything is good, and I have the utmost respect for him. But like anybody I fight, you know, I've dissected his game, and I've worked, uh, I know I know what is needed to beat him, and I have more more than enough tools to put him away. Yeah. Brian, one thing I will say is, this bantamweight division in Bellator at the moment is absolutely stacked. It is one of the best divisions Bellator has ever had. I actually looked at the top 10 in the rankings, and their combined record is 172 wins and 28 losses. How do you see yourself and your path to the title? Because there's a bit of a logjam at the top. And um, like, where do you see your next sort of step after this fight? I think the rankings um, are, are very, very questionable, to put it fucking mildly. Um, the bullshit. I think the numbers, one, yeah, I think one to six, one to seven is, is makes sense. Um, but like, you've got guys who are like, you got. Uh, Cass Belly's fighting too. That that guy wouldn't last a minute with me. I'm telling you that straight up. I would and I would murder him. You know what I mean? Um, and, and there's other guys in there too. But that's just one example. And and the 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 panelists have got that one wrong. There's other ones that they have wrong in there. You know, Darian Caldwell is number ten. How how is Darian not ahead of Cass Bell? And he's a former champion. How is the guy who beat Brett Johns not ranked ahead of him? You know what I mean? Of these guys. So it doesn't really make sense. Uh, but performance is what stick out with the Bellator brass. I know that. I'm, I'm this is my eighth fight with Bellator, you know. And um, I've I'm, I've been here all week. I was offered my show money to just hang out uh, because of the fight fell out. And I said no. I'm here to fight, you know. And when I put on this performance on this on this guy, where a lot of people would have just took their money and and, and went home or had pizza and enjoyed California. When I do that and I put on these performances that I know I have in me. That's what's going to get me title shots. That's what's going to get me into the top three, top five. You know what I mean? Right now, I'm not really too concerned about what 14 journalists think about me. You're right. And again, it is, it is a game of opinions. And I, I always do think you put on stellar performances. And 
I, I was actually saying to Barry, I was like, I was like, Brian Moore versus Sergio Pettis, Brian Moore versus Juan Archuleta. I mean, like th- they are great matchups, uh, and like you, like you aren't out of your comfort zone in there. You'd be more than happy to be in there with those guys. So like, uh, I'm looking at it now, you know, get this win on the biggest uh, card of the year. The Bellator is going to put on. Like I was listening to Josh Thompson and John McCarthy, and they were saying that Pitbull versus AJ McKee is one of the biggest fights in Bellator history. And they're saying it's probably one of the biggest fights of the year for MMA. So this is a massive chance for you to put a stake on your claim in that top 10. I know it might be opinions, but uh, I think the American fans love seeing a number next to someone's name. Especially in Irish. Yeah, and uh, look, uh, don't get me wrong, I know that the rankings, uh, they're important for, for, for fans, they're important, you know. More for marketing and... than anything else, really. Yeah, but like, people are, I, I, I think, is it maybe the short attention span that people have, but they just want to jump to rankings, they want to jump to records, they don't really delve deep. You know, you see some guys are getting like signed with, say, the UFC, for instance, and they're like 10 and 1 or whatever the fuck, but you look at their last six fights and they've, they're fighting guys with like losing records just to build it up. And it, it's, you know, people, like I said, their attention span is so short that they, they want rankings. They're not willing to look at, you know, the how people got there, you know what I mean? And look, it is what it is. Performances don't lie. Um, I'm going to go and gonna knock this guy out. Nobody else is doing, putting back-to-back knockouts in Bellator. They're not, they don't have the power that I have. That, that will open up way more eyes than rankings, in my opinion. And obviously, uh, Brian, we discussed this with Kiefer. I don't know if you saw it or not, but uh, you're fighting the Forum, Inglewood, California, one of the most iconic fight venues yeah. in the world. What does that mean to you as an Irishman going into fighting that arena? Unbelievable. Um, it means uh, 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 so much as an Irishman, for sure, but as a boxing fan, you know, if you if you looked at my YouTube, my my history, uh, my, my, my viewing history is usually fights from like the 60s, the 70s. I love looking at, like Sugar Ray Robinson is my all-time favorite fighter. You know what I mean? So I, lo- I love looking at him, but Ali has fought in the forum. Tyson has fought in the forum. One of my all-time favorites, Triple G, has fought in the forum. So to fight literally in a, in a place where these guys are my heroes, not using the word lightly, it's unbelievable. You know, I've stepped foot in the same arena that this guy, and it, I'm a guy from County Wexford where, there is no MMA gyms, you know what I mean? So to be able to do that and to work my way up to do to, to do so is a is a huge achievement in my mind. And you know, I'm very proud. Damn. And then another thing is uh obviously this fight is being broadcast on Virgin Media. How nice is yeah. that for you to say that when someone asks when where's your fight, it's on Virgin Media, or as people used to call it TV three. Like that must be so nice because I, I I remember watching Bellator past, uh, events in the past, and you'd like you put on channel five for the for the first hour, then you put on Sky Sports, and then, and then you the put YouTube, on something else. The YouTube then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So like how nice to be like, I'll be fighting on Virgin Media and you just watch the fight. Yeah, look at I'm, I'm, I'm it's it's Bellator are making huge moves, um, and have been for an uh, for a long time. And I think I, I can't wait to see it unfold. The more this pandemic fucks off, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, me they're it. on new shows. It is amazing. You know what I mean? You, like going back to going back to my early days at the fighting, there was no like uh there were no there were no channels that were showing MMA. You know, going back to you know, even when I was uh on bigger shows, it was like usually a, a pay-per-view link that was that was dodgy and shit like that. But now it's just you know, prime time viewing and uh I'm 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 really proud of that too. It's Cheers. And then Brian, obviously, like this week, it's been announced that the, like Bellator has come back to Dublin, and then they're going to London as well. I think the month before as well. So like, there's a lot of uh, there's like plenty of potential matchups you can have like again later on this year. Uh, obviously, we don't want to get you like overlooking your opponent this weekend, but it's just like knowing that Bellator has come back to Europe or and uh, sorry, Great Britain. It's uh, something to look forward to, isn't it? Well, hugely and like uh, I, I've been asked this already a few times this morning who am I looking at next and I'm uh, and I'm glad you said it I'm not looking at anybody next yeah. I'm looking at Saturday night I'm looking at I, I have blinkers on I would be foolish to put in all this work all this effort all this sacrifice all this dedication to go and look past what I've been working for so this Saturday I'm going to put on a performance like I've never put on before I'm more excited more prepared than ever before the ingredients are there for that performance and then then I'll assess what I'm going to do. August, I'm going to spend with my girls because this is a back-to-back camp and we're going to do some cool shit together. I can't wait, but, you know, it'll be back nose to the grindstone. 
um, for September, October and get that fight in November in the tree arena because I've missed out too many tree, tree arena nights with, with, with past injuries. And I think the last time I fought was when I uh, headlined it. So, you know, I'll be on, I'll be there for sure. Okay. It's just the atmosphere there. It's just, I, I, I don't even know how to describe it. And like, because we've been fucking locked up for like over a year, I feel like I'm on a, like, a, what, what's the thing with them? Jim Carrey. Oh, the Truman Show. The Truman Show. That's <laughs> Big Brother, like, for the last year. But, like, God, imagine going into Tree Arena with that, like... It, in fairness, no, it doesn't even seem real, to be honest. It, in fairness, I was actually explaining to my missus there the other day uh, about Peter Queeley versus Ryan Scope. And, like, I showed, I showed her the video where, like, Ryan Scope comes out and, like, the whole crowd is still singing Zombie. Like, no one in the world will ever tell you what Ryan Scope's walkout tune was uh, for Bellator than that time. <laughs> Because no one heard it. It was the, uh, it was the Jordy video. Shore entrance music. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And like w- w- where that was videoed was from press row. So like we were like beside yeah. the speakers and you still can't hear it. it it's a, 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 you know what they say? The Irish are the best fans of the world. And there's no doubt about it. And the sooner we can get events back in Ireland is fantastic. Um, sometimes I, I, I do like, when, you know, my heart wants to see all the Irish lads fight in Ireland, but like my head almost goes, maybe if you're offered fight in London, take the fight in London, because who knows whether Ireland's going to go ahead with the uh, carry on of what we have at the moment. Well, that happened this morning. I seen it was one of the first things I seen. And like I just me being a pretty impatient fellow, I went, oh, that's what I'm going to look for next. And I said, no, I'm actually going to take the gamble and wait it out for for to, to go in Ireland. Like I love. I love representing Ireland so much. You know, I'm. Uh, everybody knows that about me. Like, I, I, I wanted to be on the earliest prelims on Saturday so the Irish fans could stay up and watch it. You know what I mean? That's that's how much I'd, I'd prefer the Irish to see it than than you know to, to have a bigger slot on the card. And so if I can, I'll take that. I'll roll that dice where I do think London will happen, but I don't know if Dublin will happen. I'm gonna still take that gamble just so I can find the three arena. Yeah, can, can we just sort of look at the fight week now, Brian? Like, what what's what are we what are you sort of looking looking at now? Like, um, I know Kiefer's fighting as well on the card. Shout out Kiefer and uh, like John's there, which is well, who like what are we sort of looking at for you team wise in the build up to Saturday? I think we're uh, back to back fighting. Um, I think I'm number two and he's number three, but that's, okay, that's, that's who, cool. who actually knows that because like, um, but I I do want to stay early on the card because I want like my I want my Irish fans, my, my Wexford following to be able to see it. You know what I mean? Um, I'm sure they'll stay up, but I'd rather be more comfortable with things. Um, but I'll be asking for that. Maybe they'll separate us and give us a fight so John can, you know, uh, adequately corner and, you know, not be rushed that way. They, they often do that. But we'll see. You know, but right now we've got a good crew of guys. I've got Jason uh, Kearns from, from County Wexford. He's living in Dubai. He's a one and all pro. Very good friend of mine. He's over here with me. I've got Tristan Kennedy, my nutritionist. Kiefer, James, John. It's a nice crew over here. And we're, what, we're what about uh, what about Justin Bieber? Was he hanging out with you the other day? No, I didn't see Justin. I must have uh, dropped my text or something. <laughs> yeah, you should, you should. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was one of the most random and funniest pictures I've ever seen him and Conor McGregor uh, sitting on that deck chair. I was just like, that is just bizarre. But like, that's that's 2021, the world we live in. Yeah, yeah even even the way when like Connor was shouting out Justin Bieber on his Instagram live, then shouting us out after. And so like, who knows? Maybe you can get a picture of Ross next, and I'll take the photo. But, uh, <laughs> but Brian, like, um, oh, like we're gonna wrap things up because it's obviously like you're obviously folks. Busy man. Right? Yeah, we don't like as many Justin Bieber jokes or gonna lose key jokes you want to throw in. Just that's for the fan, well, the the Brian Moore fan army, you know I me. Mean? But we want to take it seriously because uh, this is a big week for you, and like we're gonna be plugging you all week. So make sure like to follow Brian. And uh, like watching win on Saturday and fly the flag, but uh, Brian, is there anyone you want to give a shout out to um, in the build up to the fight on Saturday and Bellator two sixty three, which you can watch on Virgin, and I think you could actually watch it on YouTube as well. Yeah, man, I've got a fucking long list of people. I want to thank my coaches and team, obviously the guys that are over here with me now. I want to thank uh, my management, uh, one hit. I want to thank uh, the sponsors, especially the guys who just came on board there as well, the Wexford based LMR Car Sales, um, Ferry Carrick. Uh, construction. I've got uh, LMR, um, or sorry, uh, KFIT Meals, who, who've looked after my camp meals. They've been unbelievable that way. Um, McGregor Fast, Hemp Innovations, just the list kind of goes on there. With, I'm sorry if I'm I missed on the kids. That's the, that's the last thing I wanted to say. Them, those are uh, Team Moore. It's not just Brian Morgan, there's Team Moore. And I think that's my beautiful, fantastic, amazing wife and, and two 
excellent <laughs> or two like unbelievable kids. So, you know, I'm a, it's teamwork that I represent and that's the four of us, not just me. Um, so, yeah, the, the, the best to last. Man, you're pulling up my heartstrings here, man. Jesus yeah. Christ, uh, I, I love that. Uh, I can actually see the passion in it and I can see the belief that you have in yourself and I'm definitely looking forward to watching you fight Saturday night. Look, yeah. I'm not taking the piss when I say this. The, the, the fight... I don't like when guys go training is uh, training's hard, fighting is easy. Fighting is hard, but being away from those three people is is super hard for me. Like I, I may, maybe too obsessed. I don't know, but I just fucking that's that's what has me, you know, on on, on a level ten here, ready to fight, ready to kill. Uh, is being away from them, so you know, I'm ready. There you have it, Plasma. man. I feel like my what's called uh, my missus and uh, uh, my kid are gone down the county for two or three days. Uh, with her family and like it's sort of weird like she was like you're probably going to enjoy the peace and quiet and I'm like no it's actually like weirdly lonely so like I'd, 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 <laughs> I, can definitely, I can definitely feel that vibes but uh, look there's me getting sentimental too uh, but man look at the end of the day uh, as Kiefer said the other day you don't bring your family to war you have to go over and uh, have the war yourself and then go go back home with them safe and in one piece with a W and uh, with, a, with a nice check in the pocket so uh, yeah. that's the way that's the way I see it um, guys, if you have watched this video, make sure to like, share, subscribe. Make sure to follow Brian Moore. We'll be tagging him in stuff all week. He is an absolute living Irish legend. And as always, stay, stay energized. Energized shot. Up the Irish. Been sussing you guys a couple of times. I've seen a couple of clips. I think you're doing some interviews with Dylan Moran and that. But I, I, I saw. So keep going. Keep up the good work, guys.